So antenna polarization is a topic that's a little bit tricky to understand, but it's important when setting up wireless microphones to think about. Let's say that we're using this body pack transmitter, which is what I'm talking on now. And as you can see, the antenna, the whip antenna is oriented vertically. Now this is the receiving antenna at the moment. We are closer than recommended, but we're doing this so you can see both products. Uh, when this antenna is also in the vertical orientation, we say that they are aligned in polarization. And what that means is we get the maximum RF transfer all else equal. Now we can think of the RF leaving this transmitter antenna right now with a vertical orientation. So it's oriented in the vertical plane. But wireless microphones are mobile. That's the whole point, right? They move, whether handheld or body pack. And this antenna is constantly changing orientation. So we know at times it may be at an angle. It might even be upside down, which was, again, vertical. Uh, or it may be horizontal. It may be whatever in some variation in between those. So at any polarization other than vertical with a vertical receiving antenna, we do lose some RF transfer just due to polarization loss. Now that is not the end of the world if everything else is optimized in the RF system. It does have an effect on the overall RF level though. So in cases where we want the absolute best RF performance or we really need to work on polarization, there are antennas designed that aren't linearly polarized. They're not always just vertical or just horizontal. They are circularly polarized. Here you can see an example of a couple of antennas that have circular polarization. So in this case, it doesn't matter whether the transmitting antenna is here or in this orientation or in some other plane of polarization, we get the same amount of RF transmission. These circularly polarized antennas are typically directional. Some are similar to uh, a cardioid microphone polar pattern, and some are even more directional than that something like a supercardioid or even hypercardioid pattern. Now that means that they are very useful for focusing when we know where the RF is going to be. If we're on the side of a stage with a directional circularly polarized antenna, we want to point it right at the talent. So these circularly polarized antennas typically have gain in the forward direction. Sometimes it can be 6 or 8 or 10 dB or more of gain on the front. And that's very useful when we're pointing them exactly where the talent is going to be. When we know where the RF is going to be, we point them in that direction and it helps. Because they are least or less sensitive on the sides and rear, depending on how focused they are, they actually help reject external noise and other signals we don't want to pick up, such as other wireless systems or even TV channels from outside. All right, so we talked about polarization and now we can look back at just the stock rod antennas on a diversity receiver and realize it's really important to put them at opposing angles or at some angle apart even on just the back of the local receiver. So usually a 90 degree spread is good, something like that or that or a V or whatever. As long as they're not in the same plane, that's polarization. We're trying to make the most of getting a transmitter in any polarization close to one of these antennas. So if our handheld is in this orientation or this orientation or this orientation, it's always close to the same orientation of one of these antennas. So the same idea applies with external antennas too. Uh, let's say that we have two paddles. We might put them on a stage like this uh, at opposing angles. We're still thinking polarization or they might be up high shooting down over a stage doing something like this. Again, there we're putting them in two different polarizations so that we take advantage of the best situation we can, most RF transfer. 